folks, Pilgrim here. Spring has just started. April is upon us with all the multitudinous, and I'm going to have to write all, all of them down, all the different events that are surrounding April the 8th, um, this, this highly prophetic year. We are at the end of time, and what does Scripture say about spring? And April the 8th is about just over two weeks away from us. Spring, when kings go to war. And there it is. That's the Bible's mention of spring, the description of it. And it has prophetically and historically been proven to be true to the letter over and over again. So that's another throw-in and add-on to, to April of 2024. I just find it highly significant. Um... This, and I keep talking about that experience uh, last Friday, and I haven't touched on it because there was so much other information uh, to, to give out. You know, there was the St. Patrick's video, which I really wanted to, to put out there because this may be the last St. Patrick's Day we'll ever see, uh, that we've ever seen. And, um, and I wanted to push that out there because the St. Patrick's videos are not something about the past. It's about, it's actually about the present and the future. Well, St. Patrick, everyone needs to learn about St. Patrick, the, the truth about him. Because if you want to study prophecy, then St. Patrick, in my opinion, is a very essential part because of what St. Patrick did and how he did it and the effects he had on people that speak to us today. There's a lot of prophecy in there. He was like the Apostle Paul number two because he received dreams in exactly the same way that Paul did, where he was shown a youth that calls over to him and said, step on over to Ireland. Just as Paul had one, uh, a youth appear in his dream and say, step over here to to wherever it was, Armenia or something like that. And, um, you know, so, and he converted the entire culture. You know, a lot of people, a lot of Irish people who think they're hanging on to their roots hate Christianity because of what Patrick did. And they curse him for it. And it's like, and, and I'll, I'm like, wait a minute. Why are you blaming him? Your people, your ancestors, those Celts, willingly gave up their religion and former way of life. So desperate were they to get away from the constant human sacrifices, the constant way, that, the brutality and the treatment and the disappearing uh, of their relatives you know, and people being falsely accused of being witches and and this and that and the other and thrown into the bogs of Ireland where they're still finding bodies to this day in the mud. A lot of a lot of people were being killed and murdered. It was a brutal culture and the culture of people there were ready to give it up. So instead of being angry at St. Patrick and hating Christ and Christianity for it, you know, rage at your own people and find out why they were so willing to give it up for something better that promised life that promised grace. You know? He built 365 churches and chapels and, and, and monasteries all over the island and it became known as the Island of Saints, which is why the Catholics hated them so much. And it lasted, take this for a ministry, tell me whose ministry compares with this, it lasted for 700 years before the Catholics came back with ships and cannons and bombed and bombed and bombed the Celtic Church, spelt with a K, until its utter collapse. And then the Catholics were happy to move in, hijack St. Patrick's image and claim he was a Catholic, and then tax the people to death, which is exactly what they did. But anyway, there's a lot of prophetic parallels in what Ireland, what was done to Ireland. The devil does not forgive, and Ireland from that day onwards, from that point onwards, has been hated and punished and punished and punished repeatedly for what they did during the days of Patrick, where they exported the gospel all over Europe and sowed the seeds that were primed and ready for the Reformation. And that's where a lot of prophecy comes in. Um, it's just really essential studying, in my opinion, uh, for anyone who wants to understand much of how a lot of things happened that they didn't realize were connected to St. Patrick. And it's all in those videos. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about last, 
Friday, but there's not really much to tell in a sense. I, you know, I withhold. I had other things to put out. That's why I didn't talk about it sooner. But I was out there and, um, you know, working on the pathway through the woods that I've made through the swamps, and uh, it was like a wave of nausea. But nausea is physical, and this was not physical. And I almost keeled over right there in the woods, right on the pathway. I just, it was so strong, I physically keeled. And, but it was like a realization of something so big. And my exact words were, wow, this is going to be bad. You know, it was huge, something really awful. Now, I don't think, you know, my first thought was the Ukraine, of course. I, I don't know why, but that was my first thought. It might not be that. But that was just my first thought, and uh, you know, I physically killed over, and I was, you know, it's like a mass realization, an idea, a thought so big, an impression upon my mind so powerful, and I thought a lot of people are going to suffer. This is going to affect a lot of people, and it's going to be, it's going to have, it's really, really going to have international re repercussions. It is a big event. I don't know what it is. But my exact words, I think, were something like, wow, this is going to be bad. This is really bad. And uh, for the life of me, I don't know what it was. But those are my words. This is going to be bad. This is going to be really bad. Something that's coming, some bad event. And there's so much that ties into that. And now you have all these astrophysicists, nuclear scientists, and all these kinds of people, astro astronomers. And, and all kinds of people that are going, being sent down to Texas and the other states with the National Guard telling people to stock up on food. Um, I don't have all the, all the reports that I've been over. Um, all kinds of, you know, make sure you have these things in your house. What's that got to do with the crowds and tourism for an eclipse? These are nuclear instructions in case of an attack. You know, as you said, Marcia, there's reports about Germany preparing for war, but that's because that's because Germany just threatened Russia. Just threatened Russia. I mean, what do you? Th I never credited the German government with much intelligence, but anyway, there you go. You hear that? We've had a lot of military craft flying over, over here, over these regions. A lot during the last couple of weeks. But, um, whatever's about to kick off, there is something coming and it's going to kick off. And the authorities are telling the American people along this pathway to stock up on food for two weeks, get ready, and hunker down. Why would you tell people that for, to, you know, what connection does that have with a bunch of crowds and eclipses? And as global rapture watchers, uh, spoke about in one of his latest videos, he said, while the crowds were distracted with um, with all this stuff about the eclipse, they passed a bunch of laws, you know? Yeah, there's uh, yeah, air activity, there's been trains of, of tanks, weapons, and armory being trained, uh, you know, rail tracked all over the country. Uh, very strange military movements. All of this stuff going on. And they pa and while the public was distracted, they passed a bunch of laws that would never they would never have been able to get through otherwise. And they always do this. It's like Ram Emanuel said, "Never waste a good opportunity." Uh, remember him, you know. So uh, you know, it's like that. Um, they're getting ready for something, and but it was something big, and it's bad. But you remember that 72-point list that they released a few years ago of, of domestic, let's call them theorists, domestic theorists. And um, on those lists, top of the list, were Christians and Jews and those who believe in conspiracy theories. And uh, that 72-point uh, list is still out there. It's never been rescinded. And I said 10 years ago that they were making lists. And then about a year ago, coincidentally, about a year ago, um, they proudly announced that their lists were completed. 
whatever that means. Not a lot of information on that little headline, but I remember taking note of it. You know, that the alphabet agencies were saying, their lists are now completed. And then a year later, our country is being overrun, it's being invaded. Don't forget how, in prophetic parallels, how the city of Babylon was destroyed. First it was by invasion. Then it was by internal war. And then it was utter destruction. Okay, three stages. These three stages match exactly what Revelation 17 and 18 describe. Okay? But when it comes to her fall, it says she will fall in a day, which is the poetic justice prophetic parallel to the creation of Israel in a day. Uh, in he who blesses you, I will bless. He who curses you, I will curse. And the United States has cursed Israel. And even now, right at this very exact second, they're cursing her even more. They predicted through their attempted maneuvering of events that Israel would cease to be a nation, that she would be dead as a nation by the year 2022. They made that prediction in around 2013, 2014. That prophecy failed because it didn't come from God. But the fact that they spoke death over Israel is where they sealed that last nail in the coffin. And now, and they are, and unrepentantly, they are still trying to do, try, still trying to seal Israel's fate that way. And unlike the city of Nineveh, who repented at first, you know, and then they, the second time around, they didn't repent and they were destroyed. And this eclipse passes over seven Ninevehs, eight if you want to include the one in Nova Scotia. So, an eight being a number associated with the Messiah himself. You know, um, that's a whole other video. But anyway, it's just everything, every small detail, every kind. There is no insignificant. There are no insignificant details in all of this that's playing out concerning April the eighth. It's bizarre. So they got their lists ready while the country is being invaded. They don't care about counting the foreigners that are coming in. They care about replacing the established people so that they can continue out their purpose to see the destruction of Babylon. And that's pretty much in a nutshell right there. It's really, really interesting. And that's why I, I said the other day that I want that on April the eighth, should we be here, I want to read first Samuel chapter one verse one. Spring when kings go to war. It didn't happen on the day that spring began this year but it's right there we're at the very beginning you know I remember watchwoman 65 she had a vision of a baby being born but only its head came out and and she applied different interpretations to that and, and I saw things differently I, I saw an event coming the beginning uh, the head of the events she said the body didn't come out but she took the head and put it on the counter and, and this was a very significant event put on display for all the world to see. The world is not going to miss it, you know. But all these things come from God, whether bad or good, because he allows them to happen in order for prophecy to be fulfilled that his kingdom may come. Jesus said, wars must take place, but be not afraid because these things must happen in order for the kingdom to come, you know. Folks, God bless you. Know that the Lord is coming. Keep on looking up. It's not long now. No matter what we have to go through. No matter what may happen. But pray that you may be kept faithful until the end. You know, Jesus said, He who is faithful until the end is the one that will be saved. And... I saw a really fascinating video the other day from um, Amir Sarfati, and I think it was from him, and he was talking, that Israeli guy, and he was saying, he was giving an insight in, into the Jewish perspective on prophecy, and he was saying that when the Antichrist arises, it's the, you know, Joe Public will go along with everything he says, because they you know, they want to hear good news, they want to hear peace, they want to hear... That, you know, they're going to fall in line with everything he says, but it's the ultra-Orthodox, the real hard-nosed folks right now, um, 
they are going to resist him to the death. And I would I would have thought it's the other way around. The ultra orthodox would be hailing him as the Messiah, you know, and then everyone else listens to them because they're doing it, and the whole country gets swept away under, you know, under the spell of the Antichrist. But he says, ah, he says it's the ultra orthodox that will be resisting him to the death, and the Antichrist knows it, and. You know, they will not listen to him no matter what while the whole country gets swept up into it. Those who are really religious. It says, and it and says, a very curious thing is happening in Israel right now, where even the uh, atheistics, uh, non believing Israelis, um, as they get drafted and they go into, they, they get moved to fight for their country and so on, and they, they're joining in with the prayers and the dances and things that the IDF do. So great is their hope for the revival, for the victory, uh, for Israel, and so on. And they know the whole world is against them, and they see this. And and they they don't go in with an intention to be religious, but they're getting swept up in what they see, knowing that the whole world is against them. They see something very unnatural is going on. And so they're starting to pray. They're starting to fall in with the dances. They're starting to listen to the prophecies. The hearts are being changed at 100 miles an hour by the darkness surrounding Israel. This is the fulfillment of prophecy at a hundred miles an hour the king is coming god bless you folks pray for the peace of jerusalem and all of israel pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that's jesus commandment not a request pray that you may be counted worthy and that he keeps you faithful until the end because he who is faithful until the end is the one that will be saved. God bless, and perhaps we'll see each other soon. God bless.